fun. Um, I mean, it, you and I have talked a little bit, and I know a little bit about what you've been doing too, and the interviews you've had. And I, uh, so I've just been trying to make sense of everything. Um, even from the very beginning, I think you feel the same way. It's like, well, what, why are they, why are they excommunicating people that are just trying to find the truth? And we're not like, we're not trying to ruin the gospel. We're just trying to find the truth. Yeah. And voices have come forward more and more. And I'm, I'm convinced more than ever that light is going to be shed on the darkness. And, yeah. uh, and as it's coming forward, it's really hard to believe that we just live in this world of mass deception, just complete mass deception. Man, that is just perfectly in line with where I kind of thought we might start was I was reading in Moses where Moses is speaking with the Lord or no, sorry, it's, it's Enoch He's is speaking with the Lord and he looks at the earth and he beholds the earth and there's a big chain wrapped around it. And at the other end of the chain is Lucifer holding it and laughing and and that visual has come to me more and more in recent weeks as I've learned about secret combinations, you know, all the madness going on in the media and um, with certain things that we inject in our bodies. And it's, and I also, another thing that kind of triggered this was I had a, there was a musician that I respected, kind of a new mus musician. And he recently released a a photo of him making the occult signs which says hey i've given it all away i've i've signed the dotted line now i'm i'm um, promised to be successful in my career you know he's part of the system and i'm like man there's so few people left who are who are making it on raw talent and and raw um like true um motive pure motives in government and stuff it's like this world really is controlled, owned by Satan. And uh, it's, a, it's a gloomy outlook. It doesn't sound good, but somehow there are truth seekers who are able to find light and we're, band we're coming together. And, and another thought, and I'm on a soapbox here, but is how powerful only a few with light can be against so many with darkness. And, and we kind of hear these things often that light is more powerful than darkness, but man, it's true. One powerful prayer of one person can destroy secret combinations, can, can destroy and frustrate the works of darkness it, where there are thousands of dark workers. So um, I, anyway, you, I'm feeling your power. I think you can feel mine. This is, it's time to band together and spread some light and, and, if we can really start praying powerfully and, and in sync with one another, I know we can end this darkness, even though it's so rampant all over the world. Yeah, I totally appreciate that. It's yeah. Just even your mention of prayer right there at the end, like, um, you know, you and I have both been told we don't have any power with God anymore in the priesthood. And I've seen his hand in so many ways. I know you have too, where, <laughs> I mean, the power of faith and um, the misconception of priesthood and, and some organization having a corner on the market on the priesthood. Um, it's just not true. I mean, <laughs> and we've, yeah. seen the, we've seen the fruit of blessings. We've seen the fruits of prayer, heal, miraculous healings. And the Lord is gathering his people and people are reaching out to you and I that just out of the woodwork that are, have been guided for years. And, uh, and he's guiding yeah. us all to get people that resonate with us, um, not with us, but the message. Yeah. And, and Christ. I mean, it's, he is the way, the truth, and the light. So it is. It's a powerful time. I, and I couldn't agree more on the power of one, too. I, I'm amazed at when I actually have a real prayer and what happens. It's, it's just, it's powerful. So Yeah. Yeah. Amen to that. Yeah. It really is. It is powerful. There's a guy, a Hispanic guy that I've been listening to lately, who used to be in the occult. And um, oh, I, I wish I could remember his name, Ramirez, John Ramirez, I think. And he just has powerful prayers. I was reading some of his prayers he put in a book. And I thought, 
I don't pray like this. I've never been taught to, taught to pray like this, but they were powerful. And same with another gal, Jesse Saboter. She has a Baptist background, but true Christian, you know, good woman. She has prayers that she's published. And I, and I marvel at these prayers and I've come to see, we've actually been somewhat um, disarmed in the way we pray and, and the way we're taught to focus on the technicalities and the things you say and the order you say them and the pronouns you use and closing your eyes and putting your head down and, and you're closing yourself off to heaven and the true power of a connection with God, you know? And so I'm just, I'm on fire right now, realizing how much power we really have and I want to I want to fire everybody else up too and say dig into those prayers man connect with God visualize him he's right there and we have so much more power to end darkness when we when we have an honest sincere prayer anyway yeah. okay I I'm on a 10 but look you you told me the other day that you have a whole bunch of scriptures that you've been um, um, putting together on some of these things I have not been digesting the scriptures like i used to i'm just kind of going a different direction right now um so i'm so glad to know i still have a friend who's di diving in deep and so i want to really just turn it to you and to present to us what you've found and what you're learning no thanks eric i i know we got a little bit of traction on the last video we had and i i was just going to do it on my own little video and blog but i thought you know I know on their algorithms or whatever it'll pop up and I'm hoping it'll pop up for people where they can check check this out because I think one of the one of the main um, ways that we have shields of darkness or veils of darkness over our eyes or scales of darkness is when we don't really believe what the scriptures have told us and um, these things that are being brought to light they're they're fantastic right they're so crazy and it's so almost shocking to know that you've been manipulated your whole life in a lot of ways. Yeah. Every way, not, not just, not just religiously, but politically in every way that as they're shared, we won't believe it. And so I, I wanted to have a bunch of scriptures that show, look, it's always been happening. And if we really believe this is the times before the Lord's coming, that the greatest light is coming and the greatest darkness is on the earth, then anything in the scriptures is definitely at play right now. And so I wanted to have a base for people. And as you and I keep posting things or interviews, I know you've had some powerful interviews lately. Um, as we feel inspired and the people that we talk to allow us to share, um, I want those barriers to be chipped at and broken down through, this, through the power of the word, right? Yeah, yeah. Through the word of God. And so as we break those barriers down, um, we personally will be able to receive what the Lord's telling us and, and the our listeners and others. So yeah, I'll, I'll start through these scriptures. Cut me off. You need to, I'm, <laughs> there's so many of them that I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm going to try to follow the spirit and cut and paste, but I, I went through this morning and I'm like, I, I think I added instead of took away. So I'm, I don't know, so cut me off if you think we're losing people, but, um, okay. I just sounds good. Start in Matthew. I wanted to share a little bit why um, why we are sharing because it we're going to go into some darkness. I think you have to have the darkness before the light. You have to understand the fall before you receive the atonement. And so, um, first off, in Matthew says, "Fear them not; therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops." I think that's <laughs> exactly what we're feeling. And fear yes. not. Them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That's in Matthew 10. And I mean, these people that I've heard, these interviews, they're they're putting it all on the line. Like absolutely. The darkness is real. They could kill their family member, a child, they could do whatever they want to um keep these people quiet crazy thing is i think their darkness is so above us that they i mean they'll they'll say it out loud they're trying to control the population of the earth and they just they think they have it won already yeah <laughs> so i'm i'm hoping they don't but i mean we know in the book of revelation that christians will lose their lives over this and so anyways that's interesting so in ephesians it says and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them 
And then in Doctrine and Covenants 123, uh, you shared this with me this morning, and, and it's just so powerful. It is an imperative duty that we owe to God, to angels with whom we shall be brought to stand, and also to ourselves, to our wives and children, who have been made to bow down with grief, sorrow, and care under the most damning hand of murder, tyranny, and oppression. Supported and urged on and upheld by the influence of that spirit, which hath so strongly riveted the creeds of the fathers, who have inherited lies upon the hearts of the children and filled the whole world with confusion and has been growing stronger and stronger and is now the very mainspring of all corruption and the whole earth groans under the weight of its iniquity. It is an iron yoke. It is a strong band. They are the very handcuffs and chains and shackles and fetters of hell. Therefore, it is an imperative duty that we owe not only to our own wives and children, but to the widows and the fatherless, whose husbands and fathers have been murdered under its iron hand. And the things that we're going to bring to light, they're not our wives and our children. It's other people who have no family, who have their parents are part of the occult. Their yeah. children, they have nowhere to turn to. And there are only a few out there that will believe them. And I think you and I feel that desire to help bring forth their stories. Bring yes, forth their stories. definitely. Hey, Greg, what was that you just read? That's 120, DNC 123, 7 through the end. I'm actually writing them. I'm still going to share a couple more of those. Okay. <laughs> um, so let's see. Which dark and blackening deeds are enough to make hell itself shudder? I know you have felt that as you've been interviewing these people. It's crazy. Yeah. Stand aghast and pale in the hands of the very devil to tremble and palsy and also it is imperative duty that we owe to all the rising generation to, and to all the pure in heart. For there are many yet on the earth among all sects, parties, and denominations who are blinded by the subtle craftiness of men, whereby they lie in wait to deceive and who are only kept from the truth because they know not where to find it. Therefore, that we should waste and wear out our lives in bringing to light all the hidden things of darkness wherein we know them. And they are truly manifest from heaven. These should then be attended to with great earnestness. Let no man count them as small things, for there is much which life and futurity pertaining to the saints which depends upon these things. So that's, that's really interesting to me that um, we have to share these things and bring them to light because things in fraternity depend, pertain to these things. I, as I've pondered these things, if we don't have the, the faith to share and to put it all on the line, then how can Zion be brought forth? Right. Is can Christ just come to a society that knows there's these deep, dark secrets going on, these whoredoms, these abominations, these torture with children and women, and he's just going to come and take care of it all? And, and we all of a sudden have the guts and the fortitude to handle his presence? Well, I, I don't think so. And, and I, but I'm afraid there probably are many who think that's the story, right? That Christ is going to come and take care of it all. We know he's the savior. He's taking care of our sins if we turn to him. We know that atonement is more powerful than any of us can comprehend. But I'm inclined to think that his goodness, his grace, and his atonement is not covering a lot of what's happening right now that we actually need to do some cleanup work ourselves. Yes, yes, his atonement will cover the sins if, if the perpetrators turn to him. But we've, we are in a mess of our own creating and we're allowing it to take place. And, and I think the Lord expects us to do our part. Yeah. There's a phrase that the Lord gave me, um, my patriarchal blessing, actually, it says, um, only through the exercise of agency can we magnify our souls. Uh, I love that. Only through the exercise of agency can we magnify our souls. And I think it's really tempting to just kind of go in our little cave and let the Lord do it all. He had, like you said, he had his mission. We have our mission and we cannot grow unless we use our agency to bring these things to light. I'm just so convinced. Yeah. That. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, and just, you just read those verses. I was talking with a friend yesterday, Asia, and she helped point out to me, she thinks that was actually a call from Joseph um, sort of an admission that he knew that some of the th same things we're dealing with now actually had begun in his time. And he was, he was becoming aware of those things and was calling it out and telling the members, put this away from you, you know, before it gets out of control. I had never considered that view, that pers perspective, but when she said it, it felt right to me. 
yeah yeah absolutely with some things we've talked about before with um the polygamy going on with brigham and others and there was some dark oaths being made and um yeah yeah totally there with you yeah okay um so there's another there's another group of uh of individuals that have done some research and there's this this section actually did not end but the church took you know certain parts of that letter and put it in the doctrine and covenants so listen to this that goes on and says this and again i would further suggest the impropriety of the organization of bands or companies which actually case in point of what you just said about what asia said concerning joseph seeing these things brought to light and again i would further suggest the impropriety of the organization of bands or companies by covenants or oaths by penalties or secrecies but let the time past of our experience and sufferings by the wickedness of dr samson of Ard, he was a big part of the missouri stuff his yeah. uh, fault, his betrayal of joseph and let our covenant be that of the everlasting covenant as is contained in the holy writ and the things that god has revealed unto us pure friendship always becomes weakened the very moment you undertake to make it stronger by penal oaths and secrecy that's wow. huge you think about the endowment that brigham created out of what joseph had given him penal oaths and secrecy very interesting i so, honestly don't know what that is that word you're saying penal oath i don't know what that is my understanding of that is it's penalties okay so he's in the endowment for years and swearing by your throat and ripping out of the your bowels if you revealed any secrets penal oaths and secrecies covenants or oaths penalties or secrecies at the beginning of that statement so super okay. interesting. yeah super interesting all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna dive back into the bible and just kind of show that these secret oaths the wickedness and darkness um has always been going on and then the book of mormon powerfully reveals it because moroni saw the fall of two civilizations because of these um groups of people that have gotten above them these secret combinations which in our language is conspiracy and i don't think i don't think it's an accident that our world hears the word conspiracy and you kind of like uh you think it's going to be false no matter what because it's a, it's part of the agenda it's part of the one world agenda to make it yep. make every a conspiracy there is no programming state. yeah exactly Cain to pass that Cain took one of his brother's daughters to wife, and they loved Satan more than God. And Satan said to Cain, Swear unto me by thy throat, and if thou tell it, thou shalt die. And swear thy brethren by their heads and by the living God that they tell it not. For they, if they tell it, they shall surely die. And all these things were done in secret. And Cain said, Truly, I am Mahan, the master of this great secret, that I may murder and get gain. So there, there's a key at as things are brought to light, the question is always like, how on earth do you get that low and that base and that desensitized to even do these horrific things that these guys are doing? Yeah. This will make more sense to our listeners if they haven't already heard these testimonies, the ones that we're going to post. It, this will make sense. So to murder, to get gain. <clears throat> and Cain is called Master Mahan, and he gloried in his wickedness. Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. That's right at the beginning of Genesis. And, well, our book of Moses, Moses 5, 20 through 33. So um, I just did a little bit of searching um, the characteristics of Satan. And I would love to dive into the whole agency just grabbed in Moses 4, some so as we learn that Satan wants to be the source of redemption, he is a liar. He seeks to destroy the agency of all men. He seeks honor and glory. He is the father of all lies. He deceives and blinds men and leads them captive at his will. Even as many as will not listen to the voice of the Lord, he seeks to destroy the world. Okay. Um, and then in Genesis 6-3, my spirit shall not always strive with man. So I think that's really important to remember as things are brought to light. Like these guys are void of the spirit of the Lord. These men and women have sold their souls to the devil. They love the riches of the world. They love the power of the world more than they love people. 
people and more than they love God, the two great commandments, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. And Satan has completely taken their hearts, their weaknesses and given them what they wanted and they've lost. Yeah. Lost his spirit completely. Okay. And Moses still, um, in the days of Seth, the children of men were numerous upon the face of the land. And in those days, Satan had great dominion among men and raged in their hearts. And from thenceforth came wars and bloodshed. And a man's hand was against his own brother in a ministering death because of for power. So anything, any of these secret works, secret combinations, secret conspiracies, seeking for power. It's going to try to point those out over and over again as we go through here. <laughs> it looks like you're thinking about something. <clears throat> no, that, sorry. Um, I think we have kind of a bad connection. Some of what you were saying was a little scrambled. Um, oh, shoot. Go ahead and just con continue um, finishing your thought there. Uh, well, tell me if you're not hearing me. Okay. Uh, I, can, I can adjust. It might it's uh phone it's a little sluggish right now let me just check my, my speaker uh, maybe internet, internet connection real quick here sorry let's i got three bars i'm i'm kind of all right how's your internet connection there yeah i got three bars too so i don't know huh i think they're just messing with us greg okay <laughs> that would surprise me <laughs> <laughs> all right well i I don't know how much you did not catch of that, but um, basically I think you were reading through a scripture, right? Yeah. And just pointing out again, Moses, because of secret works and seeking for power, that's the main thing, why they're doing these horrible things, why they're killing their own brother, why they're administering death. Yeah. Okay. Leviticus even, <clears throat> and thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Moloch, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. So the Lord's commanding Moses' people not to pass through the fire to Moloch. So Moloch is a god of the Old Testament. Um, he received child sacrifice from the Israelites. So blood sacrifice, and they offered these up to their idols, one of which was Baal, and another was Moloch, mm -hmm. or Baal, however you want to say that. So I'm going to read through some of these, and these things are happening in our day. <laughs> And so as crazy as it sounds, we've always read about idolatry. And I think there's other forms of idolatry and all symbolism of idolatry. Yes, those are symbols. But in reality, it's actually happening the way they did it back then as well. Yeah, yeah. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom and burnt his children in the fire after the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. This is in 2 Chronicles 28 and 33 and Jeremiah 7. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Also, he observed times and used enchantment, enchantments and used witchcraft and dealt with a familiar spirit and with wizards. He wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Okay, now in Jeremiah again in 19, um, they went to that same valley of Hinnom. Because they have forsaken me and have strange this place and have burned incense in it unto other gods, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, nor the kings of Judah, and have filled this place with the blood of innocence. You know, innocent has always been a word for children, right? <clears throat> Whether innocent people or innocent children. They have built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not nor spake it, neither came it into my mind. <clears throat> Are you hearing me, Eric? Is it, is it jump, Yeah, jump? It's, it's been good this last stretch. Yeah, keep going ahead. Okay, First Kings 14, it mentions there were sodomites in the land, these same things, high hills and groves. They had in high places, images and groves on every high hill and under every green tree, and there were also sodomites in the land. And they did according to all the abominations of the nations that the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. So the whole reason he wiped out these civilizations before the children of Israel came in the land of Canaan, now they're practicing the same satanic offerings to these idols. <clears throat> First Kings 16 has the same stuff. 
um, second Kings 16, again, it makes reference to, he made his son to pass through the fire. This is Ahaz. And they left all the commands of the Lord their God and made a molten image, even two calves. And they made a grove and worshiped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. That's Second Kings 17. Second Kings 21, and he made his son pass through the fire and observed times and used enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. I mean, some of these words, we just don't think about it. enchantments, wizards, like divination, these things we don't, we just don't think they exist. You know, I think the majority of the people don't think they're out there. Yeah. <clears throat> and yet, huge thing going on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and as simple as it may sound, um, I think they've been deliberately and intentionally getting those things into our homes where to, to the point where like Harry Potter, a household name, a book, a movie series, they literally got Satanism, witchcraft, priestcraft, all these evil things you just mentioned in those scriptures in every home and we celebrate it. We don't think twice about it. It's harm. Yeah. It's harmless. It's innocent. It's playful. It's kid fun, you know. And meanwhile, on the other side of, of the aisle, these folks are laughing at us because they succeeded to, to the point we're embracing this. And let me ask you this, Greg, everything you just read by, um, sorry, are you in Micah or where are you reading? That was Second Kings. Oh, Kings and uh, Jeremiah. First Kings, yeah. Leviticus, all the way back. <clears throat> there you go. So, so, I mean, you've got the establishment of Israel following Moses and then that, I think second Kings and all those, they work right up until the time that the, the Jews were scattered, Israel was scattered. What, so, I mean, who are they talking about? Who's doing those things? Is it the foreigners? Is it the, um, is it the non-Jews? My understanding is it's the covenant people of Israel, the covenant people of the Lord that's engaged in those things. Is that true? Yeah, it's Israel and and Judah. So at the, you know, as they started to divide, Judah and Benjamin basically stayed in the Jerusalem area, and the other children of Israel, who they called Israel, went to Samaria, right? And then eventually they were scattered all over. But these scriptures are specifically to his people. He should know yeah. better things, which is plays a huge part in in what the Book of Mormon is going to preach just against. Yeah. Okay. So um, let me see if there's any, I bolded some things to make sure. Anyways, more references to making their children walk through the fire, the blood of their children. They did give into the, in Ezekiel, they offered up the blood of their children to these idols. So yeah, it's hopefully that's established. It's throughout all the history of the Bible to the people that should be people of God. Yeah. <clears throat> And then that verse we talked about before, when the Lord talks about Isaiah, he said, all the things that he spake have been and shall be. And then he makes reference to all the other prophets as well. So they have been, they shall be. Not only does it seem right to you and I, but the Lord has put a stamp and approval on it that, yes, these things will happen in the last days. So, yeah. Okay. Now in uh, Second Nephi, now in the Book of Mormon, so specifically written to the Gentiles, to us, many nations. Um, America was settled by many nations. We're the Gentile nation. The gospel went forth to the Jews and the Gentile, the Gentiles, and now to the Jews. So it's written to us. People are going to read this book, and our spirits must have become like unto him, meaning the devil, and we become devils, angels to a devil, to be shut out from the presence of our God, and to remain with the father of lies and misery, like unto himself. Yea. To that being who beguiled our first parents, who transformeth himself nigh unto an angel of light, and stirreth up the children of men unto secret combinations of murder and all manner of secret works of darkness. So, um, right away in 2 Nephi, secret combinations of murder and all manner of secret works of darkness. And then in 2 Nephi 10, where for this cause that my covenants may be fulfilled, which I have made in the children of men that I will do unto them while they're in the flesh. I must needs destroy the secret works of darkness and of murders and of abominations. So I think this is huge. And I, I mean, there's so much we could go into the covenant 
of Israel in America, God's covenant with the Gentile nations of this land, if he doesn't destroy the secret works of darkness and murders, he can't bring forth his covenants. Mm -hmm. My experience with the Lord is that he never does anything for me that I can do for myself because of what we talked about earlier, that, that limits our growth. Like he's not going to hold our hand the whole time. He wants us to walk on our own, develop our own soul and use our agency to bring to pass much righteousness. Right? Yes, absolutely. So if we're going to fulfill the covenants, we have to discover the secret combinations of murder and their secret works of darkness and reveal them and destroy them with light and truth. And I just, I feel that. I just, yeah, yes. I, I mean, as I was thinking about sharing, I mean, I've been wrestling this for like two months, like, ah, oh, I just don't want to share this stuff. People already think I'm a kook. Um, and that, that just came one day and I'm just like, I've got, I've got to do this. I've got to share this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you do. You have covenants. I'm sure you do. I know I do. I know others do. I know there are sleepers out there who, who this will resonate with and they will also wake up. And I want to just shout a you know, do a call out to all those. If this resonates with you, consider the fact that you have covenants to help expose us to, you know, um, Greg, I, you just opened my eyes to something. The idea that you can't, that the Lord can't or won't, um, restore covenants until this is wiped out from among us that goes so well with um that scripture that i used to always quote and in, um in first nephi but the lord mentioned it in third nephi as well where he says he describes the tribulations the those turbulent circumstances and then he says then at that day will i um re uh, will, will i restore my covenant with or begin to Oh, he says commence. Uh, then at that day, will I commence to um, restore my covenants with the house of Israel? And so if, if anybody who thinks those covenants are among us now, um, um, it's, it's not true. It's not correct. Like maybe there's been a portion of it restored, but nothing near what the scriptures describe as this great day after the tribulations when the Lord's covenant it comes back and um, it just like flourishes through the land. So that is not yet. I don't think we've seen that day. Yeah. Yeah. And then we pointed out in section 124 when Vaughn came on and really went through that so well, like the yeah. fullness taken and then is revealed through Joseph, like Zion from above will meet Zion from below, like Zion from below us. It doesn't happen because the Lord comes through and it's like, oh, I'll, I'll follow the Lord. And that's way too easy. Like we've got to do the work where we're willing to be in his presence. We're willing to yeah. fight like he did. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And we yeah. may, we may call ourselves or think of ourselves as Zion, as members of the LDS church, or even as Christians in general. But, um, and I have no doubt that there are Zion like people in all of that, but there is no Zion right now. There's no centralized unified, um, um central force of um people who are willing to put these atrocities away from us i think i think that's part of the call here again and this on this episode right now start gathering with those people who will help eradicate these things from us so that we can become the zion people i just don't think we're there yet yeah, yeah and it's interesting and maybe it's okay to add this like revelation 12 the sign of the woman that happened september right um I think it was September 23rd, 2017, right after the eclipse in August of 2017, where the, the church, which I believe is the church of the firstborn, or these people that have the remnants throughout all denominations, then went into hiding and yeah. for a time. And they were persecuted severely by their own churches. Um, those that are willing to bring forth the truth have been persecuted. I mean, almost to the day, like it was crazy, at least my, the stake I was in, things started really getting crazy. Huh. Um, and then, and, and now where we're at right now, where we're starting to, to gather, um, we've been kind of scattered in the wilderness and hiding, and now light's starting to come forth and sharing the truth of what are, what's really happening. Yeah. 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 Um, so second Nephi 26, um, well, no, I'm sorry, again, 10. Wherefore, for this cause that my covenants may be fulfilled. Oh, no, I should read that. 
and Signify 26. And there are also secret combinations, even as in times of old, according to the combinations of the devil. For he is the founder of all these things, yea, the founder of murder and works of darkness. Yea, and he leadeth them by the neck with a flaxen cord until he bindeth them with the strong cords forever. Okay, and then there's specific examples throughout the Book of Mormon and Alma. Um, <laughs> this is one where I added a bunch because each, there's just so many little things in here that are just so powerful. Um, tell me if you get the idea and I need to move on. Otherwise, <laughs> <it's ex> <laughs> <laughs> all right, go for it. <laughs> and now I will speak unto you concerning those 24 plates that ye keep them, that the mysteries and the works of darkness and their secret works or the secret works of those people who have been destroyed may be made manifest or shown unto this people, yea, all their murders and robbings and their plunderings and all their wickedness and abominations may be made manifest unto this people, yea, and that ye preserve these interpreters. Why? Why did they preserve the interpreters of 24 plates? To make these secret works of darkness manifest unto the people that will read this record. I just... Hmm. Anyways, just again, for behold, the Lord saw that his people began to work in darkness, yea, work secret murders and abominations. Therefore, the Lord said, if they did not repent, they should be destroyed from off the face of the earth. And the Lord said, I will prepare unto my servant Gazellum a stone, which shall shine forth in darkness, which will shine forth in darkness unto light, that I may discover unto my people who serve me, that I may discover unto them the works of their brethren, yea, their secret works, their works of darkness, and their wickedness and abominations. I will bring forth out of darkness unto light all their secret works, their abominations. I will bring to light all their secret abominations unto every nation that shall hereafter possess the land. So the nations that will possess this land of America has to know this. We see that they did not repent, therefore they have been destroyed. And thus far the word of God has been fulfilled. Yea, their secret abominations have been brought out of darkness and made known unto us. There is a curse upon all this land that destruction shall come upon all those workers of darkness according to the power of God when they are fully ripe. Therefore, I desire that this people might not be destroyed. That's why we have the Book of Mormon, is that we're not going to be destroyed like all these other, these other two nations that we know of in the Book of Mormon, at least. Yeah. There's a on this land that destruction shall come upon all those workers of darkness according to the power of God when they are fully ripe. Therefore, I desire that this people might not be destroyed. Only their wickedness and their murders and abominations shall you make known unto them, and ye shall teach them to abhor such wickedness and abominations and murders. And ye shall also teach them that these people were destroyed on account of their wickedness and abominations and their murders. Oh, so I, I'm only reading the bold stuff, trying to skip through, but I, I missed the part. Therefore, you shall keep these secret plans of their oaths and their covenants from this people, and only their wickedness and their murders and their abominations shall you make known to them. Mm -hmm. So is it appropriate that we're sharing that these things are out there? Absolutely. Do we share the actual nitty gritty of how they make their, their oaths? I don't think that's important. I don't think we want to make that known. Right. But we want the prophets in the Book of Mormon made known. And that will help eliminate this from them. Yeah. Yeah. So that means we're under some sort of obligation, expectation to, if we are aware of certain people, names, places, events that are taking place, those should be manifest. They need to be made. They need to be shouted from the rooftops. I agree. Let's stay out of the, um, you know, maybe some of the why they do it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Or the specifics. Um, so that's pretty interesting. I, I'm glad you mentioned that. I had not considered that like in those terms. Yeah. Cause I mean, Moroni, he gets pretty graphic <laughs> in what's going on, what, what the people are doing. Well, but he makes, he keeps the secret plans in their oath secret because he doesn't want to make it available to those that have the wrong desires, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so in Helaman now, Helaman is a, I think a lot of, hopefully people are familiar with Helaman goes through a lot of this. Um, they overcome the Nephite government, these secret bands, secret combinations. And uh, so he talks about Gadianton, or Gadianton who's expert in many words. And I'm, I'm going to talk specifically about this because there are people above us in all organizations that are expert in many words, and they use flattery. And I, I think President Benson was very prophetic in a lot of things he talked about. He said the Book of Mormon um, is here to expose the, uh, the dark. How does he say it? I'm not saying it the same way he did, but anyways, the tools of the adversary and I think if you went through and did a theme search in the Book of Mormon on unbelief, 
and flattery. Um, that's exactly what happens with these guys. We, we read about these guys. It's almost like a story, like Gaddy Anton and these guys uh, that would never happen here. We would have snuffed them out. But what is flattery? And it's telling people what they want to hear. There's certain people that I believe are completely flattering their people and their organizations and the way they talk. If they weren't, if they weren't 98 years old and you and I were talking that way, you'd feel like we were trying to manipulate them. Yeah, yeah. 98 years old, it's okay to talk down and just uh it just it makes me sick actually now when i see the way the messages are delivered and the way they're saying things mm. so he was expert in many words and also in his craft to carry on the secret work of murder and robbery therefore he became a leader of the band of kishkin he did flatter them he would grant unto those who belonged to his band that they should be placed in power and authority so, I mean, I'm always asking myself, how in the heck do these people do this? Why would they do it? Well, they see in their hearts, they seek power and authority. And if you just comply with the guy above you, that you get promoted. And eventually you're in these, these oaths and these secret combinations where you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know I was climbing the ladder and my ladder is against the wrong building. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You step that out in your own heart first. You will continually seek that praise of those above you. And then you'll be in that same position where all of a sudden you have to make between death possibly because you weren't willing to take a stand for truth and righteousness earlier so yeah uh he talks about giving unto them signs and they had objects to murder to rob to gain power and this was their secret plan and their combination okay i'm skipping through stuff secret combinations is getting and the robber had established in the more settled parts of the land which at that time were not known unto those who were at the head of government. So that's early on in Helaman, Helaman 3. So the more settled parts of the land. They began to set their hearts upon their riches. Yea, they began to seek to get gain that they might be lifted up one above another. You know, God's plan ultimately is not communism, but there's no like, God's no respecter of persons. And yet when you get more power and money because of these secret oaths, you're creating distance. Yeah. Um, serfs, right? <clears throat> yep. Okay, so they, they, they have these murders, these plunders, informed by Kishkin and Gadiant. When the Lamanites found out there were robbers among them, they were exceedingly sorrowful and they did use every means in their power to destroy them off the face of the earth. But behold, Satan had stripped the hearts of the more part of the Nephites, insomuch that they did unite with those bands of robbers and did enter into their covenants and their oaths. I'd say knowingly and unknowingly <laughs> in many aspects. I wonder if, have you ever heard the message from a, a church pulpit that there are Gadiantans among us and we should seek after them to put them away from us? Have you ever heard anything like that? No, maybe that's a good time to skip ahead the current uh, change in the handbook. Have you read that? No. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll read it right now. This is, I think, I think it's sickening but um let's see if i can find this real quick so this is 38.8.40 right the handbook's now available to everybody seeking information from reliable sources in today's world information is easy to access and share this can be great blessing for those seeking to be educated and informed however many sources of information are unreliable and do not edify some sources seek to promote anger contention fear or baseless conspiracy theories. There, that programming, I think you talked about. When you hear the word conspiracy theory, you think, okay, now any, anything that's conspiracy, I just don't want to think about. I don't want to right. go into. Therefore, it is important that church, and they quote scripture right there, by the way, 3 Nephi 11.30 and Mosiah 2.32, after they said that. Therefore, it is important that church members be wise as they seek truth. Members of the church should seek out and share only credible reliable and factual sources of information so when i when i see something about COVID or whatever on facebook and it, and it gives me a fact check reminder on my facebook that would be a credible reliable source right because facebook <laughs> part of the conspiracy <laughs> or google right, right. point point I mean, taken half, more than half the world has to know that that's a crock right but yet we're being told to test these conspiracy theories against credible reliable and factual sources the same people that are telling us it's proven the vaccine has been proven i shouldn't 
call that the shot that hasn't been proven. They say it's been proven safe and effective. But <clears throat> right, right. They avoid sources that are speculative or founded on rumor. Here and here's how to, to judge. The guidance of the Holy Ghost, along with careful study, can help members discern between truth and error. In matters of doctrine and church policy, the authoritative sources are the scriptures, the teachings of the living prophets, and the general handbook. So we're that's what we're doing today. We're going to the scriptures to mm -hmm. see if they are true or not. And uh I uh, anyways, there's so much I want to say about that, but um <laughs> going back, so I would just be caution, be you and I both already know this, but our audience, I guess, just be have caution about who the scriptures teach what a prophet does and what he looks like and what he preaches. Like Eric, you just referenced, like, have you heard someone stand up at the pulpit and just pound bringing to light the hidden things of darkness and getting rid of these conspiracy leaders that are amongst us and these gadiantons that are amongst us. Right. And if we haven't heard that, why, why not? We know, we know it's there. And if you don't know it's there, you're sleeping and it's time to wake up. And, and, and even the idea that that um, these robbers, let's just use the scriptural term, robbers are among us in our very churches. That's what happened in ancient Israel. That's what happened in Christ's time. I just read Matthew, um, the, the whole book of Matthew with new eyes, um, with secret combinations in mind. And I saw them all over the place from, from John mm -hmm. the Baptist's uh, martyrdom, beheading, and the conspiracy and those who are involved to get gain. I mean, come on, there's the words. And then it goes right up through Pontius Pilate, um, you know, government leaders. They all, they were all in on this. I don't, I don't think those uh, robbers and conspiracies are unique to our day. I don't think they're unique to the Book of Mormon. I think they were alive and well in Christ's time. And I think ultimately Christ suffered a, a death, um, an accusation excommunication um on those on those phony charges by gadiant by the robbers by secret combinations and of course we know that the savior gave up his life for us but the reason he went to the cross was because of these thugs and they were in the church then and they're in the church now and i'm here to witness of that and so if if you if you aren't hearing from your leaders that, that secret combinations are among us, then it's, it's on us, you guys. If you know of these things, we've got to call this out. We're not going to hear it from church leaders, and that's obvious. we got to call this out, and we've got to do away with it somehow. But I, I mean, I don't know to what extent we, we will get involved in that. I, I believe the Lord has his own plan for for wiping it out from among us. I believe that's the tribulations. And so, Greg, I wonder to what extent, what role do we have? I, I mean, let's face it. This is, uh, Asia said this, this beast we're fighting is a hydra. You cut its head off and seven more grow in its place. This thing's out of control. It's super powerful. We know how much money these institutions have. You so much as say the wrong word, you're in court and you're, you're broke for the rest of your life. They could destroy us. Um, how, do we, uh, how do we go at this? Yeah, I think we all need to individually ask the Lord. I, I think one thing the Lord is telling us is what he tells us in the scriptures to do bring it to light like i think um part of bringing it to light starts with yourself right just like re any repentance we have to get it. we have to repent ourselves and help our family then help our neighbors and our communities i think that's the same pattern here you know the little the little bit i feel about it um is i've got to stop supporting these organizations that yeah are part of this conspiracy they're part of the gadians I've got to start, stop trusting in people that are part of this, that have let this infiltration happen. I mean, that's one thing to talk about too at this. Like if we know it's prevalent, which we do, we know the Lord told us the same things would be happening now in Israel that happened in ancient Israel. And in uh -huh. this country, the devil's not stupid. Like if he has a group of people that are willing to follow an individual in a company or an individual in a church or an individual in a business, get his people in there, like get them infiltrated. Um, on my blog after this, I'm going to start posting some of these things. 
of testimony, people coming forth and sharing. And don't don't support these organizations. Yeah. Don't just they're and they're doing horrible things to children. I mean, I've got the point that I'm, you know, I don't think we should walk around paranoid, but we should be aware, you know, why is this serpents harmless as doves? And not let our children in these places where they could be taken advantage of, you know, and mm-hmm. there's just some healthy, healthy steps we need to take. And then, and then cutting off the hydra. I mean, if, if we're funding the beast, that's investing billion millions of dollars in Gavi and UNICEF and the UN, is that really where you want your money to go? That's vaccine or arguably killing people. Right. Right. Uh, um, Anyways, I mean, if people are still listening this far, they're they're okay with the same same stuff. Like that. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think you're right. Hey, you just mentioned your blog. What? Just throw out your blog address there, so people can go there if they haven't. Bill Bow Christian. So Bill Bow is B I L B A O. It's from my mission that I served in Spain. Bill Bow. So Bill Bow Christian dot blogspot dot com. Yeah, maybe right. you and I can post some links at the bottom with these scriptures. And, uh, I mean, I, yeah, I, I think it's a great question, Eric. I think most of the people that watch this or become aware of these things almost give up because the beast is so big. Yeah. But, um, and I'll just mention Ammon. I, I, uh, Ammon Bundy, he's, uh, I don't know how you feel about him. He's a personal friend of mine. And I'm just going to share this as an idea of what one person can do. Um, Most people are not going to fight the government on stuff because they know just exactly what you said. They're going to destroy them. They're going to destroy their businesses. They're going to put them in jail. Um, That's what Ammon did. I know him personally. I know what the news media has said about him. (laughs) But he stood up for property rights because he knew the Constitution. Well, he ended up two years in prison. He's got a young family like you and I. He missed two years of the life, the lives of his kids. I, I believe that his last child, he missed his birth. The government spent over $150 million to fight him. Oh, wow. He was basically guilty until proven innocent. He was in a, he was in um, solitary confinement in a cell, you know, like, I don't, I don't know how many feet by feet, but solitary confinement in a cell in his undies for nine months um that guy lost they went after his business he had people calling him telling him you know they can't do business with them anymore the government completely destroyed him he came out of there i had him work on my truck once and he said he wasn't gonna be able to make payroll this is after he got out of prison which was a miracle the the u.s government hired their four top lawyers spent over 150 million and he walked away from the oregon prison and immediately they put him in the nevada prison and he won that trial too wow. his lawyer his lawyer died by suicide in his apartment a year, months later, right? We've heard that a times, what that really means. Right. Did, do you think he wasn't scared that they were going to do something to his kids or his wife when he was gone? Or when fighting? Now the Lord totally blessed him. He was able to sell two businesses, the ones that he the totally become, they totally destroyed him. And now he has enough to go around and, and campaign to become governor of Idaho. Like, this guy, he was one man, right? And yet he, he did what he felt was true and the Lord blessed him. And we read about people in the scriptures that it's like Elijah called fire down from heaven. I don't know. We need to pray and fear what the Lord wants us to do, but we need to act in faith, like not fear, not like, oh, this beast is so big. I can't do anything about it. I would argue that we can do something about it. Yeah. Have to do something about it. If not, I mean, I'm, I don't know how you feel, but I feel guilty all the time that I'm not doing more politically or um, in, in every way, just getting more involved and in fighting this, the evils that are about yeah. us. We all have busy lives. We're trying to make a living. We're trying to take care of our families. I don't know. I, I just can't see us sitting at the table with real patriots that fought for freedom in this country or um, the prophets, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, ether i mean all these guys moroni mormon if we are not willing to stand up against this evil i just yeah 
I wouldn't feel comfortable sitting there. Like I would just be like, yeah, I, oh, I'm grateful I'm in this celestial kingdom with you. Uh, I just don't yeah. see that. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I share those sentiments, man. I, I want to do more. I want to see this. I want to see this beast um, go away. I want to be part of that. I want to, I want to help build a kingdom worthy of our Lord to return to. And, uh, I, I think we can, I think we are, you know? Yeah. And we don't need to get overwhelmed. I do think it is important to start here and yourself, but I think it was Joseph, right? He said, he can't be content with, um, a man who's filled with the love of God isn't content to just take care of himself and his family. He eventually goes out and eventually to the whole world. And, uh, I mean, you look at the Savior's ministry, it was close to home. Um, there's something all of us can do. We just need to seek what the Lord wants us to do. But Yeah, yeah, that's well said. So, hey, a couple more scriptures, um, if you're all right with that. Yeah, let's uh, do it. Maybe we'll just go right to Ether. And, um, and that'll be a good one to end on. because And there's so much more in Mormon. And we'll post these at the bottom. People can dive in and figure this out too if they really believe that this is part of what uh, our calling is in this life. Mm -hmm. um, so in these final wars, you know, they're offering up women and ch children unto sacrifices unto their idol gods. Then Moroni jumps in and this is, um, well, Mormon 8, let's see. I think I better read this one too, um, and then go to Ether. But so, because of secret combinations and the works of darkness, the power of, the power of God shall be denied. Um, yes, come in a day, meaning the Book of Mormon will be brought forth, when there shall be heard of fires, tempests, vapors of smoke, and foreign lands. There shall also be heard of wars, rumors of wars, and earthquakes in diverse places. Yea, it shall come in a day when there shall be great pollutions upon the face of the earth. There shall be murders and robbing and lying and deceivings and whoredoms and all manner of abominations. When there shall be many who will do this, say, do this or do that, and it matters not, the Lord will uphold such at the last day. But woe unto such, for they are in the gall of bitterness and the bonds of iniquity. Yea, and it shall come in a day when there shall be churches built up that shall say, come unto me, and for your money ye shall be forgiven your sins. O ye wicked and perverse and stiff-necked people. Why have you built up churches unto yourselves to get gain? Why have you transfigured the holy word of God that you might bring damnation upon your souls? Behold, look ye unto the revelations of God. For behold, the time cometh at that day when all these things must be fulfilled. Behold, the Lord has shown unto me great marvelous things concerning that which must shortly come. At that day when these things shall come forth among you. Behold, I speak unto you as if you were present and yet you are not. But behold, Jesus Christ hath shown you unto me, and I know your doing. Your churches, yea, even every one, have become polluted because of the pride of your hearts. Ye love money and your substance and your fine apparel and the adorning of your churches more than ye love the poor and the needy, the sick, and the afflicted. O ye pollutions, ye hypocrites, ye teachers who sell yourselves for that which will canker, why have ye polluted the holy church of God? Why are ye ashamed to take upon you the name of Christ? Why do ye not think that greater is the value of an endless happiness than that misery which never dies? Because of the praise of the world. Why do ye adorn yourselves with that which hath no life, and yet suffer the hungry and the needy and the naked and the sick and afflicted pass by you and notice them not? Why do ye build up your secret abominations to get gain and cause that widows and should mourn before the Lord and orphans mourn before the Lord? I just, I mean, that ties that whole secret combination theme in yeah. the praise of the world. They want, and I would say if we do nothing about it, we don't care. Yeah. We don't care that people are suffering that I, I mean, honestly, I was thinking about this stuff and if I should share and if I should, cause I'm going to share more, but I wanted to get this foundation in first. And I had this dream, it was right before I woke up, and it was my, well, my youngest son curled up in a ball on a, on a gym floor in an LDS church. And I woke up going, you know what, if that was my kid, or if that was my wife that's been through the abuse of these people that I've heard come forward and share, 
I would be fighting with everything I had to reveal this darkness and not let one more child be abused yeah. in our churches. And that's the things that, that I'm going to start sharing are these, these testimonies, these courageous testimonies, these people that have come forth and shared. And yet we sit by and act like nothing's happening and, and we're just going to sit and let the Lord come and redeem us. Like, oh. yeah, it doesn't I, add up. You'd care less. He's not going to redeem us if, we, if we're like that. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Thank I you, feel, Greg. But I, anyway. I feel that. I feel what you're saying. I, I, um, I, I'm going to go back to Ezekiel 34 again. It's one we've talked about before. It talks about the shepherds in the last days. And I just had this crazy insight. It's, uh, we, you know how we often read the scriptures metaphorically, like, okay, this prophet was using a metaphor that talked about this in the last days or whatever. But Ezekiel said he saw the uh, shepherds feasting upon the flock. And um, I'm not so sure that was a metaphor. I, I think he um, I think he actually saw a physical thing. And if if the reports I'm getting are true from some of these people, and it sounds like you're getting some of the same types of reports, this is a literal feasting, and it's disgusting. It's cannibalism. It's deplorable. It's Satanism. It's worship of Baal and Moloch. It's the absolute most abominable thing that could go on on this earth, and it's happening right under our noses. And um, and I know it's true, and I know it's happening, and I know it's happening by those who um, who profess to be our shepherds. And if there's nothing more deplorable than that, I don't I don't know how it could get any more evil. And so these things will be called out. These things will be shouted from the rooftops. And if I have anything, any part of that, I will gladly do so. And again, in a, in a final positive thought, I know I do this, whatever I know um, and understand, I think the same for you, Greg, is so that we can have healing, so that we can build as a Zion people and, and build that place for Christ to return to. This is my hope. It's not, this isn't kicking and fighting against an institution or people. It's, it's all about the healing and, um, and increasing the, the worthiness of, of this world to receive our Savior. So there's my yeah. final thoughts. You can have the final word today, Greg. No, that's, that's awesome. Um, I, uh, maybe I'll just end with um, Moroni's words. Um, just because I think he says exactly what you just said. Um, the Lord, and I could go through all those abominations again, but I, leading away with fair promises. I'll just read the end of Ether 8 here. Um, and it came to pass that they formed a secret combination, even they of old, which combination is most abominable and wicked above all in the sight of God. For the Lord worked not in secret combinations. Neither doth he will that man should shed blood, but in all things hath forbidden it. And now I'm Moroni. So here he chimes in. <clears throat> Do not write the manner of their oaths and combinations, for it hath been made known unto me that they are had among all people. They are had among the Lamanites, and they have caused the destruction of this people of whom I am now speaking, and also the destruction of the people of Nephi. So here's, he just told us he's seen us and he's writing his final stamp on the end of the book of Ether of these, this Jaredite civilization. Why does he choose to talk about secret combinations and whose whatsoever nation shall uphold such secret combinations to get power and gain until they shall spread over the nation. Behold, they shall be destroyed for the Lord will not suffer that the blood of his saints, which shall be shed by them shall always cry unto him from the ground for vengeance upon them. And yet he avenged them not. That was interesting. The blood of the saint, his saints. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, O ye Gentiles, it is wisdom in God that these things should be shown unto you, that thereby ye may repent of your sins and suffer not that these murderous combinations shall get above you, which are built up to get power and gain. And the work, yea, even the work of destruction come upon you. Yea, even the sword of the justice of the eternal God shall fall you to your overthrown destruction if ye shall suffer these things to be. So if we allow these things to be, that will happen. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, the Lord commandeth you, when ye shall see these things come among you, that ye shall awake to the sense of your awful situation because of this secret combination which shall be among you. Or woe be unto it because of the blood of them who have been slain, for they cry from the dust for vengeance upon it and also upon those who built it up. For it cometh to pass that whoso buildeth it up seeketh 
overthrow the freedom of all lands, nations, and countries, and it bringeth to pass the destruction of all people, for it is built up by the devil, who is the father of all lies, even that same liar who beguiled our first parents, yea, even that same liar who hath caused man to commit murder from the beginning, who hath hardened the hearts of men that they have murdered the prophets and stoned them and cast them out from the beginning. Wherefore, I, Moroni, am commanded to write these things, so that evil may be done away, and that the time may come that Satan may have no power upon the hearts of the children of men, but that they may be persuaded to do good continually, that they may come into the fountain of all righteousness and be saved. So I, yeah, I guess I just add, I mean, we've already, I've already said it. The LDS church is an apostasy. Like, um, as I, I mean, it's like every day now in the newsroom or they make some statement that if we, if we don't realize Moroni is talking to us, the saints, the members of the church, he's Christ, the saints, like he's not talking to anybody else. Nobody else is reading this book. Even the good, good Christians, a lot of them are, are never going to read this book. Right. Um, there's a, you know, President Benson, J. Reuben Clark, David O. McKay. You know, I grew up as a product of President Benson. You probably did too in high school, you know, at seminary. And that guy, he spoke out against the UN all the time. Like he called it a godless conspiracy. Mm -hmm. Back then, the Book of Mormon student manual said there's no such thing as conspiracy theory in the Book of Mormon. Excuse me, it's only conspiracy fact. Mm -hmm. That's now been taken out of the manual um now we have the handbook saying you know really really carefully to try to get us not to look into conspiracy theories and believe them and yet the scriptures are filled with prophets telling us to get rid of this from amongst us littered with this nation america will be destroyed just like the nephites and the jaredites if we do not root it out from among us That's if right. we don't and so i would just urge people to see the truth and uh, just add my witness and testimony that that it's happening amongst us and i hope you'll take time to look at the things that um, eric has posted with um laura worley and then he i believe he's going to post some other things i'm going to post some links and let the spirit guide you see what you feel and see what you do because i know that the lord will tell us all the things that we can do to help bring about zion Perfect, Greg. Thank you. I didn't realize you were up to some of those things. And uh, so I will be eagerly watching what you post as well. Thank you so much for all you're doing to bring light and, uh, and put an end to this darkness that's around us. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, you know, I just had a thought. Maybe I'll share. It. Um, sorry. <laughs> now go ahead. I did have the opportunity to serve as a bishop and almost the whole time I was there, there was a sister that shared that this, these things had happened to her. And I'm keeping it confidential. I'm not using names, but um, I knew she was telling me the truth. I knew it. The spirit bore witness to me. I believe the book of Mormon. I love the book of Mormon. And if, if not, if there wasn't anything that came of that because the higher up leaders didn't want to mess with it, I, you know, I was trying to help all sorts. We could talk about that forever, but I don't, I don't want to get too much into that. But the one thing that I hope we do is we believe these people that share their witnesses. I, I can't imagine how frustrating it'd be to know that these things are happening. And as you share your witness, people don't believe you because they're just, put their head in the sand and they don't want to care. Um, just believing them, I think, gives them so much validation to even keep going. I can't imagine how hard it'd be to keep living life with the abuse that these individuals have taken on. I, I love them. I, every time I hear their testimony, I just, my heart, I just want to grab them and hold them, you know, and I, I know the Lord wants to. And, um, and he does. He makes compensation for that. He's giving them some tools to help them get through it. It's amazing. And the Lord has healed them. Each one of them, the Lord has healed them and they've had the, the power and the resolve to come forward and share. So I guess kind of a segue into the testimony that people are going to hear, hear them out, pray about it and see if the Lord witnesses to you that they're true too. So anyways, thanks Eric for giving me a chance to, to speak on your, your show. <laughs> oh, for sure.
Thanks, thanks for, for the nudge. It's always great working with you. I really do appreciate you and what you're doing. So I hope we can do it again sometime. Okay. See ya. <laughs> Bye. See you, man.